Welcome back for the conclusion of our LTI Spotlight conversation with Martin Leonard of Turnitin. I'm your host, Linda Fang, and I'm with Unicon, a technology consulting firm focused solely on the education ecosystem. In our previous episode, Martin used the Names and Role Provisioning Service to create a scoreboard for an LTI tool he's building in real time. In this episode, Martin wraps up his LTI build and demos a bonus service from LTI, still in candidate final. Let's see what Martin is doing now. So what we've seen so far is that we've created an entire LTI advantage tool from scratch, from a tool that had no integration whatsoever, all the way up to a tool that used the LTI 1.3 core launch. It used deep linking, the assignments and grade service, as well as the names and roles provisioning service. So there's actually a couple more services that, um, and extensions that LTI supports that are kind of in the works. Um, they're up and coming. And the idea is, is that with the LTI Advantage services, we can add and extend LTI even more and even easier than it was previously. Um, and we can just, you know, if we have a particular use case that we want to solve, then we can easily do that through new and exciting services through LTI. So a good example of this would be the group service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a different course here as an instructor. And you can see on this course, I have some groups. And this has a group set called Teams. And inside that group set, uh, I have two teams. And there's a bunch of students uh, split out between those teams on this course. There we go. Well, now with the new course group service, we can actually display that group's information inside our tool and we have access to it. It's only read only. We cannot write anything back to the platform, but we can read the groups and we can interpret them how we want. Um, and again, enrich the experience that the user would be having um, and enrich what the tool is capable of doing. So this is actually going to be really simple to do because again, it's something that's been added to the PHP library. So let's start off in here and we're going to go straight over to our scoreboard that we had previously. Um, and you can see the inside scoreboard here. Um, we've actually got the capability of creating multiple scoreboards. We're returning an array here. So what we're going to do is instead of just having this one scoreboard, we're going to see whether we have access to the group service and the context group service. And if we do have access to it, then what we can do is we can get the groups and get the sets. So we're going to say, because we have access to the group service, let's get the group sets. Um, and we're going to get the group service and then get all the sets on it. It's here. And then we can go through our memberships and see uh, which groups different members are in. And then we can fetch all of the groups and associate the members to them. So again, this is just going to be a little bit of code that's going to kind of loop through all of our users and attach a bit of extra data to them. So we're just going through them and adding as well as their, um, their name and their scores. We're also grouping them by whichever groups we're given from the platform. And we'll add for each group set a new type of scoreboard. So we can save this and have a look at what this looks like. We go back into our, into our platform here. Um, so I'm going to launch in here in my course that has some groups. And this time, what it's going to do is it's going to load the tool, and then it's going to load the scoreboard. 
And when it loads the scoreboard, you will see that now at the top we have all, but we also have teams. And if I click on teams, you can see that in our groups, what we've done is we've grouped the scores and the times together and we've summed them all up. So we can see that team one has played for 67 seconds with a total score of 3,930, whereas team two has only played for 40 seconds with a total score of 2,100. And that's just one application um, of course groups. You know, so this is kind of teaming together, grouping students to team. Um, you could also uh, have them as marking groups, assessment groups. Um, they are, they're kind of ad hoc um, groups, so that they're, they're not specific to um, you know, a particular type or a particular use. Uh, it's up to the tool how they want to, to utilize these groups. Um, and in this case, we're grouping them as teams and seeing uh, who has the highest score out of the combined users in a particular group. And that's some of what's coming in the future for LTI. That's, that's great, Martin. I, I'm really um, excited to see this come out. It is something that I know people are going to want to be able to, uh, to have that capability to read what the course groups are from the course. Um, one question that I had here was, uh, so you're, you're, you're grouping the members into the different teams Sometimes those course groups also have like a name associated with the group. Is that something that's also accessible through the new group service? Yes, so, so in this case, uh, what you'll see here is this is the group set here is called Teams. And here we're split into Team 1 and Team 2. Uh, and if I go back into uh, where I set up the groups, you can see that our group set is called ah, teams so and okay. each of each of our groups is called team one and team two. So all of that information is is passed down. If it was like the blue group and the purple group, then that would show up as yes. the team names. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's worth noting that um, enrollment on a group is binary. So you're either on the group or you're not. Um, there's no kind of you know, this person owns a group, uh, this person's an instructor on a group, this person's a student on a group. It is just a collection of, of users um, that they're either in the collection or they're not. Okay. Uh, the reason that this was done was just to try and uh, keep the implementation of the service simple um, and, you know, not kind of limit the use cases mm -hmm. too much of, uh, of, of what, what the extension is capable of. Right. I can see kind of the next step beyond that will be people are going to want to do uh, syncing so that you could actually create groups or update groups. Yeah, and it's up to the, the tool. If the tool would like to, you know, imp just import the groups from the platform and then allow kind of local modifications to it just within the tool, um, there's nothing stopping the tool from doing that and just using those groups as kind of a basis um, right. to work off. Um, but yeah, at the moment, there's no, there's no kind of pushing those groups back up to the platform. This is definitely a good start and will help a lot of people. Yeah. And this is, this is currently uh, live in Blackboard. It's also something that Turnitin uh, uses with Blackboard. Uh, we already have implemented and we, we actually use it as, um, as kind of like a marking groups uh, filter within our inbox. So you can see a list of students. And if you created a group, you can filter that list by a particular group for different instructors. If they want to, you know, if an instructor wants to just look at their Tuesday group, they can, they can select that group of students rather than having to view the whole list. That's great. Um, well, I guess at this point, um, I, I just want to thank you, Martin, for spending the time and walking us through this. This has been tremendously helpful. Uh, and I know that uh, there's some resources and links that you're going to be providing, <clears throat> and we'll include those um, uh, with the, the recorded session. Yep, so there's some handy resources that are also available. 
if you're new to LTI and kind of just starting out, best place to start is from the IMS's website, the Learning Tools Interoperability page uh, for developers, and that will uh, guide you to all of the official resources. There is also an extremely helpful collection of resources on the IMS's GitHub um, under an LTI bootcamp repo. And this actually has recordings of presentations similar to this one, um, as well as uh, other libraries in different languages. There's actually multiple PHP libraries now for, for building LTI 1.3 tools, um, libraries in Java, Python, all sorts, and, and just generally other open source resources of example tools that people have built. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a good place to start if, if you're interested in building uh, something with LTI. Yeah, I believe our <clears throat> Unicon uh, training tool is also available through that bootcamp link as well. Um, this, uh, this has been great. I really uh, appreciated just seeing how, I think with your library, it kind of uh, nicely encapsulates most of the complexity and makes it so you can really focus on just what those core interactions are between uh, getting the, the launch enabled and then getting the right piece of information you need to, to do the links and the assignments, getting the, the names and roles. Yeah, you know, what, what people want to focus on is they want to spend their time you know, making their application look good, making their application you know, rich in features and integrating that with the LMS. They don't want to have to spend, you know, hours on end manipulating what they have to try and fit it in a way that the LMS can understand it. Um, so kind of abstracting that and making it as simple as possible so that you can get something up and running in, you know, a few hours in a day, uh, rather than having to spend weeks on end just to get any kind of interoperability um, kind of will really help people. Yeah. And then you can also reuse this same for uh, the same library for different tools that you might be working on. So I think that's a big benefit as well. Yep. It's also worth noting because the, uh, the tools are, if I go back to the slide, the, the tools are on the IMS GitHub. Um, they are both, both the example tool and the library are open to contributions. Uh, so we've had multiple people kind of help out, make little changes, report bugs um, that we try and fix when we can. Uh, so if you've used the tool or are thinking of using it um, or you have something that you want to add to it, uh, please get in contact and uh, help contribute. That's great. Thanks again, Martin. Very welcome.